Bang! Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency and blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, look. There's going to be drinking, smoking, and swearing on here. If you don't like those things, you better leave now. It's all right, coming three, two, one. Bang! Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. My name is Shamar Clark, and we have a great show for you today. All right. All right, brothers. So, what are we going to talk about today, brothers? Yes. We've got, we've talked about this before. Um, um, e Ethereum and how distributed apps are migrating away from Ethereum. And we're going to talk about it. I mean, I've said it before, but I didn't have numbers. So now we actually have some numbers and some data. And so we're going to get into some data. As you guys know, I think that the real war of cryptocurrency is going to happen in the platform token area of distribute of uh, cryptocurrency. Right? You want to transfer money? You got Stellar and you got Stellar and XRP. You wanna you want Internet of Things? You got VeChain and IOTA. You know what I mean? Like, but uh, platform tokens. There's a lot of them, and I think they're gonna battle for many years to come <laughs> for distributed apps and all that kind of stuff. And that's where I think the battle is. So look, we're gonna talk about that battle. All right, brothers, and then we have got uh, oh, the Bitcoin bubble is yet to come. I mean, I've already told you this, but we're going to hear it from someone else, from a professional person and all that. Mm. Yes. And bang, Championship Nation, the Philippines. Bang, comes online. Now they leave a little bit, and that's what I don't like about it. I told you guys that. That's what I don't like about these little crypto sites. There's a lot of information I'd like to know. But, I mean, anyways, man, we'll just take what little info they can give us, and then I'll dig around later and find out. All right, brother? So, look. Let's start how we usually start around these parts. Bang. Yes. And then we bang. Yes. And then we refresh. What are we at? 5320. Let's see where we're at now. 5215. All right. All right. So still hovering around here. Yes. Yeah, a little single digit fives. All right. All right. Let's look at the top 10. Uh, um, top 10 of the day, top 10 market cap of the day, brothers. Bang! The usual suspects, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, EOS, Bitcoin Cash, Binance Coin, Stellar, Tether, and Bank Cardano. Now, let's see what's going down today. Mm, looks like everything's kind of red. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Single digits red. So, uh, let's call this single digits down, brothers. Single digits down. Single digits down to single digits up. Oh, who's that with 31 up? Crypto.com chain. All right. Single digits down to single digits up. Single digits down to single digits up. But let's get real. Mostly single digits down. All right, brothers. Let's look at if anything's on sale today, anything worthy of buying. Let's see what we got, brothers. Buying. Mm, all right. Top 10 loser of the day, True Chain, True Chain, IOST, Loop Ring, Nulls, Augur, Walton Chain, Zillica, Aeon, Stratus, Pivx, and Steam. All right. Those are healthy. Those are healthy. If you see anything in there you like. Yes. That's a little those 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 are that's a little healthy sale. Not much, but healthy. Let's see who made money today. Bang! All right. All right, top 10 winners of the day. Lambda, Crypto.com, Chain, Wax, Tezos, Digix, Digitex Futures, Crypto.com, Bitcoin Diamond Day, Vest Chain, Insight Chain, and Nebulous. All right, let's look at our total market caps and the good stuff there. All right, let me get my little paper so I see what yesterday's market caps were. Actually, I should have this ready when I start. Uh-oh. Yeesh. All right, we lost $5 billion in market cap today. Uh, so we're at a 182.4 yesterday. Today we are at 177.6. And in terms of total volume, we are actually up in total volume. So 56.6 in total volume. So, uh, you know, maybe a little profit taking. Yep, not much of a big deal as far as I'm concerned. Like I said, you know, like a three to $500 range in Bitcoin movement is, I think, normal. It's so volatile, right? So we're still at 5'2". Let's see where we go from there, brother. So, all right, brothers. Bye. Let me get a little fuel. 
All right, so first of all, let me say this, though. Ethereum price stalls as DApp users flirt with other crypto platforms. So we talked about this a little bit. Actually, let me make this a little bit bigger. Boom, boom. All right, it's a little hard to read. Let me just make sure you guys can see it. All right. All right, perfect. All right. So Ethereum price stalls as DApp users flirt with other crypto platforms. Yeah. Well, it's fuck the price. The price, we know the price. Don't don't ever worry about price until these institutional investors arrive in droves. Until then, we are in an immature market. Hey, prices really don't matter. But why I do bring up this story is that um, other distributed apps, uh, distributed apps are leaving Ethereum and they're going to other platforms. I mean, I've talked about this before. Last November, December, I think I talked about how um, Kik, K-I-K, left Ethereum. That's, I guess that was some sort of big thing or something. They left Ethereum and they went to um, Stellar. And then a couple other big ones just left and went to Tron last week. So I thought I'd just bring this up just to get you, you know, just to see what's going on in the, uh, in the uh, platform token battles. Like I said, I think platform tokens are where the battles of cryptocurrency is going to be, right? All these other cryptos are like, yeah, we're this killer, that killer. Ah, that's all a bunch of bullshit. But the platform token stuff, that's where I believe the battle is going to be in the future. Well, not the future. It's happening right now. But I mean, going into the future, we're going we're gonna to see clear winners, right? Like, so for instance, moving money around the world, we're going to see clear winners, right? Stellar, right? Uh, Iota. Uh, in term, not sorry, sorry. Let me let me calm down there. Internet of Things, you know, IOTA V Chain will be clear winners. You know what I mean? Whereas this platform token thing, I think they will be battling for many. May, I've said it already, but for many, many, many years to come. You know, I'm a platform token lover because I believe all companies, all companies and industries out there, whether you're small or medium business or whatever, you're gonna have distributed apps, right? And you gotta have somewhere to put them. And uh, so I think in terms of uh, the crypto world, that distributed apps is where the battle is going to go on for many, many years. I don't think there's, there's not going to be a battle between VeChain and IOTA. They're just going to split up the market. You know, there's not going to be any battle. All right, let's just say this between XRP and Stellar. Well, Stellar's winning right now, but they'll just split up the market probably, right? They will battle in this platform token space for a long time, right? Keep upgrading. Well, we're faster. We have more, tran you know, and then and some other guy will be like, well, now we have more transactions. And some other guy will be like, you know, well, now we're quantum proven, blah, blah, blah. You know, like it'll keep escalating like, a, you know, like an arms race. You know, they, they call it an arms race. You know, countries, you know, we build better missiles, better bombs than the next guy, right? It's a race to the most killer thing you can get. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, fuck, that's how it goes. So, and I think that's what it'll be. Platform tokens are going to be where the arms race of the cryptocurrency world happens. All right. That was a long-winded thing, brother. Look, look, brother, it's my show. I can talk. And actually, I'm going to even get fueled in a minute. So just hold on, brother. Read that. <laughs> but yeah, this isn't about the price. Fuck all the price thing. Like I said, until institutional investors arrive... He gives a shit about the price of anything. That's just weekend money, retail money. All right, brothers. The Ethereum price has ballooned by nearly one third so far in April, but without Bitcoin's bullish tailwind, Ethereum might be stuck in a rut. Whatever. Um, yes, according to dapp.com, the second largest cryptocurrencies network suffered defections in Q1 of 2019s as users fled the network for rival platforms. If users would only stay loyal to decentralized apps on the Ethereum blockchain, the Ethereum price might finally uh, recapture its former glory, whatever, whatever, don't worry about the price. Price will happen later on. And plus, this guy's obviously an idiot. See what I'm saying about these crypto sites? Uh, well, if people used it, it would go up. First of all, no. And second of all, Ethereum's already a commodity, dick. 
that shit's going to go up regardless <laughs> of anyone using it. There could be not one distributed app on Ethereum. It's a commodity. They're going to buy it. Store value. Holy. Oh, Anyways, we have to read on, though. As one of the largest and most high-profile blockchains, Ethereum has every reason to be leading the distributed app race against rival platforms such as Tron, EOS, and Steam. And by some data points, it is. Of the more than 500 distributed apps that were added to dapp.com in Q1 of 2019, more than 50% of them were built on Ethereum. So, and the, this is the .com, uh, the dapp.com guy, he says, it shows that Ethereum is still the number one choice for developers to build their distributed apps on, according to dapp.com's report. Here's the rub. With the exception of gamers, which is one of the most popular categories for decentralized apps, not all of Ethereum's dApp users stick around. Ethereum suffered a 4% year-over-year decline in the number of distributed app users in Q1. Worse, fewer than 7% of 2018 distributed app users are still using Ethereum in 2019. Yeesh. So out of all the categories of dApps, gamers are Ethereum's most loyal bunch. And then here's the thing here. If you guys are really interested in this stuff, uh, like I said, I always say it. I post the, the links to these articles in the, in the description of the video. And come on down and take a comprehensive look for yourself uh, about uh, all this stuff. All right? Blah, blah, blah. That's just a bunch of bullshit there. Um, so he says, the simple reality is, is that until the last things, and then this is why people are leaving uh, uh, Ethereum. The simple reality is that until the last six to nine months, there were no other options besides Ethereum. Now there are. Remember I told you about last year, what last year was? Last year was the, the year of white papers becoming real, like mainnets coming online and like actual onboarding of clients. You know what I mean? IOTA, VeChain, Stellar, all these guys, Tron and all that, you know, onboarded real, they started making money, right? And so... Nine months ago, there wasn't any way to do a distributed app except Ethereum now. Well, now you have choices, right? Blah, blah, blah. This hedge fund guy says some bullshit and blah, blah, blah. Um, so this is a, just some stats here, a little bit of data. So if Ethereum isn't winning over the distributed app users, who is? Well, let's look at Q1, distributed app, active usage on the leading blockchains according to dapp.com. EOS, 95% of the EOS dapps were active. So... That's what they're saying. All right, hold on. We'll read it. Tron and Steam, more than 80% of their distributed apps were active. Ethereum, nearly 6,000 distributed apps were in inactive status. In other words, there are way more distributed apps on, on Ethereum. Yeah, but no one's using them. No one's fucking using them. And so um, EOS, wait, wait, let's go back. Hold on. Sorry, guys. EOS, 95% are in active use. Yeah, they're using them right now. The guys are actually using it day by day, right? 80% uh, on Steam and Tron are being used day by day, day by day. I'd like to see, you know, they're saying 6,000 weren't active. I'd like to see what the percentage of active was. What does that mean if 6,000 aren't? What does that mean? Only 20% are active? 50% active? What is that number? You see what I'm saying? And that's why these are some... All right, man, I'm not going to get all angry. But that's why these are some bullshit websites here, man. Like, you know... If this were, you know, Wall Street Journal, it would obviously give you what you need. Anyway, whatever, man. Look, adding insult to injury, EOS and Tron processed over 1 billion transaction volume in Q1. The second largest cryptocurrency, which has been plagued with scalability issues, has transaction volumes of $202 million over Q1. So, um, blah, 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 and then that doesn't mean anything. Uh, well, all right, I'll just tell you. So Tron lovers, well, not Tron lovers, but uh, developers at Tron love that. Tron helps them with their developments and stuff like that. <clears throat> so I thought I'd just give you that. I think that's where the battle is going to be uh, going into the future, going forward. We're going to get a lot way past these stupid little crypto kitties and, you know, just all these gambling apps. And we're going to get into stuff that actually, you know, work, you know, like, I mean, that do something, you know, that people, 
you know, mom and pops are going to log in and do something with it, all right? And personally, I think that's where the battle is. Going to be going forward is in the platform token world. I think that's where the battle is going to go for a long, long time. Like a long, long time. You know what I mean? Like that's why these guys, I'm the Ethereum killer. I'm the Neo killer. I'm the EOS killer. Like I'm the whatever killer. These guys are going to kill each other. They're going to battle back and forth many, many, many years to come. I think so. We'll see. All right, brothers. Look. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, yes. And so I told you guys, right? So I was around for the dot-com bubble. And so I bring this story up for the dot-com bubble thing and how it's showing this story is also about macro trends, which is really what I'm teaching you here. I don't give you bullshit uh, TA technical analysis because pff, there is no technical analysis to be done on this bullshit yet. If you're reading technical analysis websites or going to technical analysis YouTube channels, those guys are duping you. By just drawing a bunch of trend lines, that's a bunch of bullshit. So, but what is true, the macro trends. Well, what's the macro trends? The macro trend is very simple. All around the world, major infrastructure is being built. What is that infrastructure being built for? It's being built so that it's regulated and licensed. So that what can happen? So that institutional investors can arrive with their clients' money. Bang! And we get rich by selling them our cryptocurrency warehouses. Bang! That's what's happening. The macro that's what we do around these parts, macro fundamentals. All right, brothers, look. So, yeah, that's what we do. And uh, that's how easy it is, right? When it's just macro, well, you don't got to sit and trade every day. Like, I'm a Forex trader, right? So I got to trade every day, right? With this macro stuff, well, I just buy the good stuff and wait. That's what we're doing, right? Waiting. Just waiting for a tsunami that we know is coming, right? That's the macro. All right, brothers. All right. Hold on. Let me let me open this again. Hold on one second. All right, guys. Uh, Bitcoin has been. Oh, fuck off. Hold on. All right. Bitcoin has been compared to various asset classes over the years. Um. Hold on one second. Uh, the most robust comparison made is with the most robust comparison made is with gold. It's compared to gold a lot because of its limited supply and utility as a store of value. Store of value. Moreover, Bitcoin is more often than not termed as digital gold. However, together together with crypt, with the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin is now more than a commodity. It forms the basis of the fintech industry. Um, if industrial, if industrial macro trends are to be recognized, and this is what I always tell you guys about, if industrial macro trends are to be recognized, industrial production in the 1930s and the dot-com bubble in the 1990s are the two most prominent economic movements in the U.S. in the last 100 years. The dot-com bubble analogy has always been used to describe the price characteristics of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies due to the network effect. Moreover, the Dow Jones Industrial Average finds close relevance with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in terms of the price and market sentiments. Now, we're going to get past that. Blah, 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 Dow Jones, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, we're going to get past that. This is what cryptocurrency is like, right? It's like the dot-com bubble. I told you I was alive during the dot-com bubble, blah, 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 blah. And here's how it worked. And this is, about, this is exactly what's going to happen here. For more than 25 years, the U.S. government had limited the use of Internet for government-related purposes only. However, in 1994, the Internet became available to the general public. The various new Internet companies were soon listed through an IPO, which raised millions of dollars in less than a year. Now, and that's the whole point, right? Yeah, they raised money during IPOs. Well, guess what? You have the IP. You are the IPO now, right? You're the guy with the assets this time. This is the, that's why I say this is a once in a lifetime chance. You're the guy with the assets this time, right? You're the guy with the money, not not you know you know the rich guy giving us the IPO. You're the guy, sort of IPOing it to them, right? Um, at its peak, the Nasdaq market capitalization during the dot com bubble was approximately listen to this, six point seven trillion. Yep, that's what look. 
Guys, I'm telling you right now, when these institutions get here, yeah, they're going to FOMO too. And there's going to be a huge bubble. And it ain't going to be no retail bubble like 2017. This is going to be an institutional bubble. And this institutional bubble is going to be massive. Massive. And that's why when I say you're going to be rich, like I really mean it. Like, you'll see. The cryptocurrency bubble was just around 800 billion. Yeah, not even 1 trillion during 2017. Yeah, not even a trillion. For Bitcoin, the institutional support currently offered to it is custody, which is led by Fidelity Investments, Gemini Trust, and Coinbase. That's why Bitcoin's going to go up in value because there's custody for it is what they're trying to say there. Uh, in December 2017, CME and CBOE exchanges also enabled futures trading of Bitcoin. We read about CME. The CME uh, futures trading is kicking ass. The CBOE futures trading, yeesh, they discontinued that last month. Moreover, traditional exchanges have also been given regulatory approval under compliance with the rules and guidelines. Nevertheless, the backed and SEC approval of Bitcoin ETFs and its direct legalization as a currency or any other asset are still pending. Moreover, technologically as well, a lot of progress is yet to be made by most of the top cryptocurrencies in using Bitcoin. Whatever. Hence, while the bulls and the bears continue to tussle over the price of Bitcoin, there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger picture to it, which the traders might be overlooking. While the bottom might be confirmed, there is still no reason that Bitcoin might not yet revisit its yearly lows. Well, there's no reason it will either. I'd say there's no reason it will either the yearly lows because yeah, there's no more weekends. How are you gonna where are you gonna no one's selling? Bitcoin well, you thought you just said they were selling tonight, Shamari. Oh, and I forgot to write down the price. Anyway, hold on. Bitcoin macro, a popular crypto influence on Twitter, might have righteously summed up the current plan of action to traders. The bear market isn't over yet. Don't listen to those telling you that it's over. Anyway, fuck him. He's wrong. It's over. So, yeah. So, those are the trends. Uh, and that I wanted to read to you like the, just like the dot-com bubble. Yep. It was a frenzy. It was a fucking frenzy. And at its height, $6.7 trillion. Trillion under Bill Clinton, man. From 1994 to 2000. Boom. Everything just exploded. I mean, you were getting rich. Just, you know, you didn't even have to think about it. And that's what this is about to be. The same, same thing. All right. Now, bang. The Philippines. Look, our nation of champions. Philippines. It's on our nation of champions. All right. So, to tell you the truth, I didn't really think this was that big of a deal, but it was on every single website. And so... Uh, you know, so, well, you know, we got to talk about it. And I mean, it is our list of champions. So, but what I didn't, the reason I didn't, I wasn't really going to read this to you guys at first because, well, okay, like the reason this is amazing is fine. You're giving, they have regulated government exchanges, uh, regulated exchanges now, right? Like that's the real deal. But, well, but they're not telling us what they're offering, you know, like, okay, you know, it's a regulated exchange, but what? Is it offering a futures? Are they offering, a, 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 you, know, um, a, you know, ETFs? What, right? So anyways, man, so I wasn't going to read it, but whatever. Let's just read it anyway. According to local reports, the Bango Central NG Philippines BSP has approved three cryptocurrency exchanges, bringing the total number of approved crypto exchanges to 10. So like we have backed, we have Gemini here. Well, they've approved 10 of theirs, but I want to know what, what products are their guys offering? Do you understand what I'm saying, right? Like Bact, we know Bact wants to offer the physically subtle futures. All right, well, what are these guys offering? But the reason I also bring it up is we might not know what they're offering, but bang, 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 we don't want to get surprised that some whales just get unleashed. Yes, you don't want to be surprised. Buy everything you can, buy all those large caps, buy everything you can, brothers. All right. You've been warned. All right. So, guys, the New York, or sorry, the Manila, Manila Times reported, Melcher Plabasan, officer in charge at the Technology Risk and Innovation Supervision Department of the Central Bank, said newly approved were Web Express, Inc., Conville Fills, Inc., and ABA Global Fills, 
Inc. All right, those are the new exchanges. As CCN reported in July 2018, the Kagani Economic Zone Authority, a government-operated economic zone in the northern tip of the Philippines, issued 24 licenses of its own to crypto exchanges, raising the count of licensed exchanges in the Philippines to 34. All right, so there are 34. Now, this is where I really also got tantalized. One in 10 of, our, of, of, of Filipinos use crypto. Look, look. So, in recent years, the Philippines has grown into a powerhouse of a market for cryptocurrency businesses, primarily due to favorable regulations. Yes. Bye. Welcome to the Cryptocurrency Nation of Champions. And the rapid growth of local companies. Coins PH, for instance. Oh, Coins PH. They, they hooked up with Ripple. I think Coins PH is doing some shit with Ripple, aren't they? Oh, and, uh, or maybe it's not Ripple. I think it's Western Union. Anyway, whatever. Coins PH, for instance, the biggest crypto exchange in Southeast Asia, is said to have one out of 10 adults in the Philippines as users. Bang, 10% of the population are using that. A, st a statistic that convinced the leading ride-hailing app operator in Indonesia, Gojeb, to acquire the company. All right. All right, hold on. All right, all right. That's just the, the acquiring. Ever since, the Philippines legitimized cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin as a remittance method in February 2017 through an official circular issued by the Central Bank of the Philippines. The Philippines cryptocurrency sector has been maturing at a rapid rate. Indeed. Bang on the nation of champions. At the time, the central bank said that while it does not endorse cryptocurrencies, it aims to regulate crypto assets like Bitcoin as a remittance method and as a means to transfer value. Exactly. Uh, that's what we're seeing, right? It, everyone is, uh, you know, it, just making sure that everything's safe. All right. And then down here, they're saying that Japan is taking the same. Uh, or sorry, the Philippines is taking the same move as Japan. I'll, actually, I'll read this part down here. Um, the first Bitcoin ATM, so this is down here we're going to read. The first Bitcoin ATM installed by the Union Bank of the Philippines, one of the largest commercial banks in the country, was also approved directly by the Central Bank of the Philippines. So now there's an actual Bitcoin ATM. The approach towards cryptocurrency regulation of the Central Bank of the Philippines is to strictly regulate virtually every area in the local crypto market to facilitate the growth of its crypto sector in the right direction exactly and that's exactly what we're doing here in america yeah yeah it's taking a long time but when it's over you know there's not going to be any shenanigans people are going to feel safe and bang institutional investors are going to arrive because they'll be able to say well i did my due diligence even if they lose all their customers money so guys the philippines came online so that's that philippine central bank has legalized 10 exchanges, but then they said there was 34. So, bang, let's get shout outs and airdrops. Bang, all right. DP Entertainment, see you, brother. Bang. Oh, this girl here, Blockchain Stallion. Yo, girl. Oh, what do you do for a living? You're smart as hell. She sent me some article about, uh, and, and, and so let me talk to you over here, Stallion. Yeah, that article you sent me, it was about an opaque, um, uh, actively managed, managed ETF. You're right. That has nothing to do with cryptocurrency now. But definitely in the future, that will be an investment vehicle that people will definitely try to apply to this cryptocurrency market. So, yeah, uh, awesome article. Shit, you went deep in the weeds there, man. You went deep in the weeds. What do you do for a living? Hit me up on, uh, on, on, on uh, Twitter here. Yes, bang, girl. Bang, indeed. All right. Binim Gazai, see you, brother. Bang. Bitcoin Gong, see you, brother. Bang. Yes, Radster. See you, brother. 1975. Bang. Crypto witch. Oh, what do we got here? I don't, I chart what I love and passionate about. I am ready to share everything I know. Come take a look at my Telegram channel. All right, sweetie. Bang. See you, girl. What else we got? Oh, and here he is. <laughs> Son of a bitch right here. Fuck stick. So this is really, this is Hurricane Mostock. He told me like, all right, I found an old an old Twitter account that I used to use. <laughs> Luck, brother. For fuck's sakes. 
would you just stop doing whatever the fuck you're doing? Like, what are you doing that you keep getting kicked off of Twitter? Is it that important? I mean, is it making you money, whatever you're doing? Fuck, come on, brother. Bang, see you, Pop Master. Poppy Wood. Bang, see you, brother. All right, this guy keeps getting kicked off of Twitter. Like, often. Like, it's, you know, come on, dude. <laughs> what the hell? All right, let's see what else we got. Xena, see you, girl. Bang. Oh, she changed her picture. Edwin. Yes, that's our brother, Edwin. Wait, wait, where is he? Bang, see you, Edwin. And then here it is. Look at Poppy. He actually has a can of bang. <laughs> so that's real shit, huh? All right. So watch, man. I'm going to find some of that shit. I'm going to order some of that shit on Amazon or something, man. I'll drink a glass of it right here with my with my fuel one night. <laughs> bang. All right. Yes, yes. Oh, and here's the article she sent me. Blockchain Stallion. Yes, girl. That's some good shit. That's some good shit right there. Uh, nothing to do with crypto yet, but it will. Crypto Voucher. The go-to for getting great discount and vouchers for your crypto. All right. Bang. All right, I think that's everybody. Oh, here's Bitcoin Kong. What do you send me? Some sexy girl banging. Yes, look at her. Oh, I like it. Hey, what's this do? Let me do this. Bang, bang. Bang. All right, girl. Yes. That's how we like our girls. Banging. All right, guys. Let's get out of here. Get back to your wives. Bang and lives. All right, brothers. So, we had a good show today. Um, I just wanted to show you that. Well, I had already told you that um, 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 distributed apps were leaving Ethereum and going to Stellar and Tron. Um. Anyways, but I wanted you to see an official thing about it, you know, not just me talking to you, okay? So that's how it goes, and it looks like EOS and Tron, the beauty of it, but their dApps is they may have a lot less distributed apps on their network, but they're actually being used. And so that's what matters in terms of the distributed app fight. Like I said, I think uh, platform tokens were the battle of uh the um crypto you know these blockchain services companies are going to be all right bitcoin bubble yet to come i believe it just like the dot-com bubble once the institutional arrives we are going to see a massive blast off all right i've been telling you that and philippines legalizes some more bitcoin exchanges so get ready to see some more whale money coming in money equals demand Demand equals scarcity. Scarcity equals bang, the price of your stuff going up. So, guys, let me let you all go back to your wives and lives. Bang, guys, my name's Shamar Clark. It's your favorite time of my day. I love doing this. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. And uh, really, that's about it. So, oh, shill it. Right. So, bang, subscribe below. Press the bell. You'll get automatic notifications when I do these. All right, guys. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bang. It's Shamar Clark. Always on duty. Over and out.